Hello my friends, and welcome to MB Shoe Doc Review Series, where we will explore the world of quality shoes for men. We will cover general shoe care and knowledge, review the brands you love, and introduce you to brands that you've never heard of. So get yourself ready, and let's dive right into today's unboxing video. Alright, I'm excited to bring you a new brand here today, Bridlin. This is a brand I discovered on Instagram here. This was started by Mr. Hassan in Watanabe in Japan in 2011. They started off doing online sales and department store sales, uh, but they really wanted to expand the business and have high quality Goodyear welded shoes at a reasonable cost. And so now they are using a factory in India, one of the few Goodyear welted factories in India. Um, and they're using leathers from Anane and Dupoy with JR soles. And so we will take a look at this pair here. So this one is an Anane Vigiano uh, box calf. And this is a Austerity Brogue here. It is going to have the JR soles. This is the Deuce Last. Let's take a look. So first thing I notice is all the uh, goodies, all the extras here. So they've got another set of laces included, which is always nice to see. This here, just saying that they have the, the JR soles, talking about those a little bit. And for those that don't know, these are some of the, uh, the toughest and uh, longest lasting leather soles available. Got a note here thanking me and I'm um, looking for feedback and yeah, uh, mentioning that this is part of their founders line, which is kind of their higher end uh, line. They also have um, there's some other shoes on kind of their main line that, that I noticed that really kind of stood out to me as well. Um, you're just talking about the Goodyear welting. Yeah, the process. Okay, yeah, another thing that's talking about, um, you know, what we've got here. So Anane Vigano French box calf. Um, the counter stiffener, so the heel stiffener is using leather board instead of like a particle board. Um, talking about the insole, the outsole, uh, a true leather heel stack. So yeah, just really um, some of the high-end features on these at a very reasonable cost. So this shoe, these are $340. They had some others that really kind of jumped out at me. Some unlined loafers for only $122 is quite amazing uh, in the main line around 287 so you know, this is kind of like getting into the Meerman uh, territory on this uh, cost which is great all right so this is nice to see as well that each of the shoes has their own shoe bag it's one of those things and again kind of a kind of a small thing but uh, but that is a nice touch all right so we've got both the shoes individual shoe bags um, kind of a standard uh, cotton bag, nice little leather uh, patch on it here. And let's take a look at these. Really, really quite a beautiful shoe right out of the box here. Really nice kind of mid to dark brown color, chiseled last shape, a chiseled toe here. It's got a decent amount of shine on the toe right out of the box too, so it looks like they add a little bit of hand polishing, I would say, to these. And notice here, look at this, absolutely beautiful sole. So this is a, a hand dyed and shined, it's closed channel. Got the Triumph toe plates already on there, the JR sole. It's got a, a 
slim, subtle, uh, but noticeable kind of beveled waist here. Really, really impressive sole work. Yeah, let's take a look here. So yeah, you can tell that it is a true stacked leather heel, which is nice to see. It is 360 degree welted. Really, they've got this heel cut uh, pretty trim here for a 360 welt. A lot of times they can stick out a little bit more, be a little bulkier, where the 270 welt sometimes can have a little tighter heel. This is pretty tight uh, for a 360, so that's uh, definitely slimmer than what I see on like Allen Edmonds, I would say. Let's get the other shoe out here and take a look at it. Really, really pretty high density, stitch density on the uppers. This is exceptionally clean, really nice stitching here. This double roll row of stitches along the austerity bro, single stitching here, but this is really pretty high density, much higher than, than standard, I would say. And then the sole as well, it's eight to nine uh, PSI, and, and yeah, it's a pretty high density sole stitch as well. So I'm kind of looking this thing over, you know, I don't really see any kind of defects at all in the shoe. It really looks perfect. Nice leather, uh, nice padding on this leather insole as well. Fully leather lined. The, the leather lining actually feels really nice too. You can tell it's high quality. I like the flat laces as well, just kind of a, a small thing, but uh, I like that they included round laces, but I would definitely leave the flat laces on here. So let's get these cleaned up, shined up just a little bit more. Just getting them uh, kind of brushed off a little bit. They were a little dusty just from the, uh, the shoe bags, had a little lint on there. But let's add just a little bit more shine again. These are actually shinier than average right out of the box, which is uh, nice to see. I think they're gonna shine up really, really quickly here. I like to keep a little bit of that uh, burnish on the toe. So I'm gonna use this dark brown. This is Saphir Mirror Gloss. Just apply a little bit of this by hand. So I always like to get the first layers like this just with my fingertips before I introduce a cloth. Now the uh, mirror gloss by Saphir is a drier wax, so less solvents, so it builds up a layer a little bit quicker. So it's great for building a, a foundation, but I find that um, some of the softer waxes maybe are easier to get the high shine. So don't go 100% with the mirror gloss, just kind of building that base base layer with it. And then I like to use the Pat Deluxe, or I've had some good luck with this uh, Carmina wax as well on top. All right, now that I've gotten a few layers added by hand, you know, it kind of leaves kind of a hazy finish here. I'm gonna introduce a cloth, getting it damp, not too wet. And now I've switched over to Saphir, Medal Dior, it's the PDL Pat Deluxe, we call it. Just getting just a tiny little dab of wax on the fingertip with this damp cloth. And I'm gonna do some buffing here. So this is gonna smooth out those layers that I added by hand. At the same time, it's adding a little bit of wax too. And this PDL or Pat Deluxe has got more solvents in it, and so it kind of melts the previous layers and smooths them out. Now they were absolutely fine to wear right out of the box. Don't need to add any additional shine to them, but that's just the way I like to do it. And when I'm showcasing a new brand like this too, I like to get it extra shiny just to really kind of show them off. And after I've done this, added a few layers, kind of smoothed it out. 
I'll let this one sit for a moment. I'll go over to the, the other shoe for a while. And repeat the process there. We are almost done here for the last step. I'm going to take this uh, Shine Water. This is by Boot Black. You know, really, I think this is just uh, a water and alcohol mixture here. I'm just going to take a little drop of this. This is going to be the final buff. Shine. Yeah, these shined up really nicely. Get this other one done here. And you know, I could take it a, a little bit further if I wanted to, but I'm uh, perfectly satisfied with these. There, quite a nice shine on them. I did not mirror shine the heel, put a high shine on it, but not a mirror shine. I did mirror shine the toe. One more thing that I'll, I'll point out to you. You may notice that I did not carry the mirror shine all the way up. So on a shoe like this, especially when I haven't worn it, I don't know where it's going to crease at. Now, if this was a cap toe, you know, I could probably shine it up to the uh, stitch line, but being an austerity brogue, you know, it's gonna, it could crease somewhere along this wing tip. I don't know for sure. So I did not take the mirror shine all the way up to here. This is kind of an elongated toe as well. So there's a good chance that it could crease somewhere ahead of uh, that stitch line. So, you know, the mirror shine really kind of stops here and it fades on the way up. And that's the way I recommend you do it on a, new pair also very reasonable to wear them a few times first before you do the mirror shine uh, and honestly that's probably the ideal way um, but because I like to get some photos of these with the high shine and showcase them I do mirror shine them before I wear them um, but that's probably not truly the uh, the smartest way to do things just kind of one more look at these look at the overall shape Again, I think it's a really beautiful shoe. The sole is exceptionally impressive. Um, absolutely wonderful. High quality, high quality construction and craftsmanship for under $400 for a Goodyear welted shoe. Um, made in India, but some of the craftsmanship and design from some people that started in Japan with uh, really high standards. I think this is uh, a brand that's going to do really well and look forward to seeing more from them. Uh, thank you. Hope you enjoyed this uh, video. I'll see you on the next one.